Okay, so I am going to go to the template that I provided in the blog post. And ask if I want to make a new copy. Yes, I do. So, it's thinking about it. Probably just accidentally made two of them by clicking it twice. Go. Okay, so once it makes the copy, uh, you'll probably want to rename it. Um, sample daily sign in. Um, name it for, you know, obviously your class that you're going to do it. So if you look here on what I've named the mail tab, this is your Valmerge template. Um, let me zoom in. And so what you'll see here is when it says data sheet, it's talking about feedback. It's looking at what's on this feedback tab. That's where it's going to go and pull the information. Um, so what I want to do on this mail tab then is it's from the user. So I'm going to put in Alice Keeler as I'm the user. And then I want to I put my subject line here so I can put in your daily feedback from math class or whatever it is that you'd like. So this is what's going to show up. So you'll notice I have in brackets that is the merge tag. So it's going to pull the first name of the student. So I'm going to go back here over to the feedback tab. Now what you'll notice is that the column headers have multiple words in them. And I find it easier if it's just one word. So I'm going to replace where it says first name. I'm just, oops, I'm just going to say first. Where it says last name, I'm just going to say last. And for email, just, just email, comments, warm up. And then I already have these columns for feedback and set. Now I created these blue and yellow com columns myself. If you were doing this from scratch, you would have uh, had to add those manually. So the reason why I changed them to single words is because it's a lot easier to do the mail merge tab uh, tags when they're single words. So I come back here to the mail tab. So some things you'll notice it says the email column is email. So remember before it said email address, so I need it to say email so that it matches. So it's looking for the student's email in the email column. The other thing that I created is this send equals y. Now if you want, you can delete that. You don't have to have a query, you don't have to have send equals y. But the reason I have that, if I go back to the feedback tab, is I anticipate that I'm going to use this exact same form every day. Well, I don't want to send Tuesday's feedback on Wednesday. I want to send Tuesday's feedback on Tuesday and be done with it. So I have this send column so I can go through and say yes, send it, yes, 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 send it. And then when I go to do that, the, when I say after I send it, I want to delete that so I don't send it again. So in this column I that I created, if it has a Y in the send column, then it will email that student. If it does not have a Y, it won't. Uh, the tricky part is remembering that after you send it to delete the Ys if you're going to reuse it. Okay, so I'm going to do that and then I've just got my template. It says hello first last and again those are in the merge tags. So if you did not change it where it said first, it still says first name, then you'll need to change your merge tags to match so that the column headers match exactly with the merge tags. Um, the student's comments, it says your comments, and here's the comments. It's in a merge tag, so if you go back here, whatever the student put here under comments for comments, questions, concerns, um, it's going to actually copy that right in there. And then I want to give my feedback or my response back. And so then what I notice is as students had um, submitted their comments, and then I go through here and I give feedback, good job, you're awesome. Those are the exact comments I try to avoid because they're not specific. You really want to address students specifically if possible. But I give my feedback, and that's what's going to show up here under my feedback. But then it says build newsletter here. Now, I can only be in this column, column B. If I put stuff in column A or column C, um, it won't even work. Just don't go there. We're here in column B. I'm going to replace this with reminder, there is a test tomorrow. Okay. Many students were asking where the 
test review is. It is on my website, askeela.com slash students. Right, and so I can go through and I can just write a nice little newsletter here and sometimes I will get really lengthy and I'm like, oh, I better add 20 more rows to the bottom and I, I have a lot of information there. But it's nice because I can share a newsletter but I, with it, students daily of things that they want to remember and things they want to know. But I try and customize it based on the stuff that students said in their comments. So if I notice several students don't know the due date, then I want to remind them, you know, when the due date is. Uh, the other thing I can do is I can actually use the paint can and I can make things bold. And because up here you'll see it says rich text equals yes, um, it will actually bold and color code just like I did. It'll kind of keep some of the formatting um, that I do in the newsletter portion. So that is pretty nice. So now I have made this copy. Um, if you go to form, you can do a couple of things. You have form, I can edit the form. So if you would like to change anything, um, like I have your warm up question, if you want to add more questions, you can. Um, but do be aware that if you add more warm up questions, that um, it'll mess up, it'll put them in H and I, it'll go on top of it. So um, you would need to possibly re-add the columns. Um, so be careful of that. Um, but anyway, you can, you can edit it if you'd like to. You know, you're not stuck with the form that I made. It's just like a starter, so you're welcome to add more questions. Um, the other thing, when you go to form, um, notice I can go to the live form. And this is what you would share with your students. So you want to get this link up here at the top, and you copy and paste that onto your website and say, students, every day, come in and click on this link. Um, form. Uh, and I love the show summary of responses. It gives me a breakdown of kind of what people answered, so that's kind of quick to use. But so those are some things that you might want to use. Now I had done insert and I'd gone to script, insert script, and I already did this, and I looked up Valmerge. And I installed Valmerge. Um, you'll notice, right, I can tell that it's installed because it now says Valmerge up here. The first time you use it, Valmerge, mail merge, It's going to give you this like, ah, do you sure you want to do this? Okay, yes I do. Thank you for asking. Um, remember people at Google did not make this script. So if you're going to use scripts, you got to trust the, the author and give them permission. Also, it's free, so sometimes different scripts are a little bit glitchy, but um, you know, you get what you pay for. So have a good attitude. Sometimes you have to close the form and open it back up um, with just various scripts. I find this one to be relatively stable, so that's nice. So then what I'm going to do when I'm ready is I go Val Merge and I hit Mail Merge. I have to do it a second time because the first time I had to authorize it. I only have to do that one time. Then it says, hey, where's the template sheet? Now, my template sheet was here. Oops, yeah, I didn't like that. Was here. This is where it has the directions and the newsletter, and I named mine Mail. Now when I make a new Google form and I'm going to install Valmerge, I like to like click on the tab and I take this template here and I copy it to my new spreadsheet that I just made so I don't have to try and type and remember like all this stuff. There's no way I'm going to remember that. So I just, I just keep copying it. Um, or you can just use my template. So anyway, I go Valmerge, Mail Merge, and the tab that has the Valmerge info on it, in this case I named Mail, so I click OK. And it can't send it to anybody because I didn't have anybody fill out the form. Uh, but theoretically, it would give you an authorization, and it's all in like really ugly HTML. Just put OK, and then it'll send it out. Um, sometimes it'll take a long time for it to show up, and you'll think, it's not working. Well, the more times the form has been filled out, the longer it takes to process all of it. The other issue you might run into is that the email addresses have to be email addresses. So if you had a student who had their email address at mail.fresnostate and comma edu, like they made a mistake and put a comma or they forgot the at symbol or something that makes it not look like an email address, it'll freeze up the, the script and it won't continue. 
And what's really bad about that is let's say I had like all of these, these first 11, these first 10 were correct email addresses. And then this 11th one is not a correct email address. So it would send, 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 and be like, oops, that's not an email address. It would give you an error. So then you'd have to go through and fix that. And then you'd val merge, mail merge, and you'd run it again. But it would resend it to the first you know, people up until there was the error. So before you send the val merge, you might want to double check all the student email addresses that they look like an email address. So those are just some friendly hints. Um, once I give the feedback, don't forget I put a yes to tell it to send, but once I'm done, I need to delete that out. Or I can put anything, I can put sent, just so I can remind myself that it's been sent. Just as long as it doesn't have a Y, it won't send. So I hope that was helpful.